I'm Stevie Wonder. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. And you're watching Chart Center. Chart Center. Uh -huh. Chart Center. Hell yes. What's up and welcome Harmonizers. And everybody else. We're all Harmonizers. And welcome to Chart Center. I'm Tetris Kelly. And I'm Christina Garibaldi. And we actually spoke to Fifth Harmony all about their new album. Work, work, work. 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 Plus, we got some great fan reaction. <laughs> We also have an interview and performance with the voice winner, Allison Porter. We are going behind the scenes at the Bottle Rock Festival, and we have a very, very special appearance by Scott Stapp. Scott Stapp? You're gonna love it. But before we get to all that, we are going inside the numbers, giving you the top stories from the Billboard charts. Well, it might sound like deja vu, but Drake is taking over the week again. For the second week in a row, he pulled a hat trick, number one on the Billboard 200, Hot 100, and Artist 100. He's only the fourth artist ever to do that. It's kind of like the Mount Rushmore of artists. We got Taylor Swift, Adele, and The Weeknd. Pretty impressive company. But Drake's album is spending its fourth consecutive week at number one. The last male artist to do this was Michael Buble, who did it with his album, Christmas. That spent five consecutive weeks at number one. Congrats, Drake. But what's really cool is that on the Billboard 200, we had five debuts in the top 10. Eric Clapton, Bob Dylan, Mud Crutch, and at the top of the charts, number two, Ariana Grande, and number three, Blake Shelton. You better keep on keeping it lit. Tetris, we have a big issue here at Billboard. It is Battle of the Brothers, Nick Jonas versus Joe Jonas. Now, they both saw big bumps from the Billboard Music Awards on the Hot 100. Is it really a battle? It's a battle. Well, let's settle it. It's time for a lightning round. Let's die living dangerously. Christina, you have 15 seconds to explain to me why Nick is hotter going into the summer. All right, I'm ready. Go. Close jump to number 15 on the Hot 100. He had a top 10 hit with Jealous, which peaked at number seven. He had two Billboard 200 top 10 albums. Plus, his new album, Last Year Was Complicated, comes out on June 10th. That features Tovlo, Ty Dolla Sign, Big Sean. He also has 10.6 million Twitter followers. Okay, that's Joe enough. Joe has 8.2. <laughs> that's because I haven't retweeted him yet. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you about my friend Joe. See, Joe, on the other hand, after the BBMAs ended up at number 14 with Cake by the Ocean. That's better than 15. Also, Cake by the Ocean has 111 million views on YouTube. That's more than 104 million for Jealous. Can you even count? Okay. And let's talk about top 10s. My boy Joe has DNCE with Cake by the Ocean and also a song with Demi Lovato in 2008. I gotta find you. Well, Nick Jonas is best friends with Demi Lovato. <laughs> well, Joe was on Grease Live. Mm, you know who's a real winner in all of this? Ah. Kevin Jonas, that reality show? No, Frankie Jonas, the bonus Jonas. What are you talking about, Frankie? Frankie, bonus, bonus Jonas. Jonas. Yes. No, Kevin. Ugh. Hey, we're Atlas Genius. At I'm Atlas Genius. And we are, you're <laughs> all Atlas Genius, and you're watching Chart Center. The Bottle Rock Music Festival just wrapped up its fourth year in Napa Valley. Yeah, and we sent our correspondent, Shira Carson, there. She talked to all the big names, including Mr. Stevie Wonder himself. Yes. This is your live look-in presented by StubHub. Hey, Christina and Tetris. This is Shira Carson, live from Bottle Rock. And I'm working really hard, or hardly working. We have lots of sad ballads. So I had to include the crying emoji. Isn't that the laughing crying emoji? Oh no. I'm a millennial. I have no idea what a mixtape is. <laughs> I have no idea what a millennial is. <laughs> Great, we're on the same page. At Bottle Rock, you can get so much food, it is unreal. And I'm talking $7 empanadas. What were you guys doing when you were 10 years old? Because these kids behind me were shredding it. Um, we hate no, pop. We, we no, despise no. it. We, we used to make, we had a song that said pop sucks. <laughs> Sounds like you guys were born in the wrong era. My daughter liked the pop music stuff. Taylor Swift and the Taylor Swift. all those type of people. Yeah. Has she ever met Taylor Swift? No, she met Rihanna though. What was she like when she met Rihanna? I think Rihanna was more excited. Rihanna was more excited. <laughs> Your daughter's like, eh, it's yeah. Rihanna. I'm just excited about being a part of this thing called music. And I have to thank Billboard as well because the very first award I remember getting when I was 13 was at the Apollo Theater before having an album and single number one simultaneously. So we've had a long and a wonderful history. Well guys, I'm Shira Carson and that's a wrap live from Bottle Rock. I just need to kind of take a nap on my tour bus. I have a tour bus, right? 
She has a tour bus? Yeah, it's part right next to mine, you know, the one that says Tetris in the gold letters. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know what? I've been prepared for this because I thought you may Michael Strahan me, Tetris. Oh, I mean, I would you know, never. So I've been auditioning for some co-hosts. What? Just in case you leave Chart Center. Just in case. Uh, just in case. And I think I might have found one in Scott Stapp. Oh, God. Check this out. We're long, Hi, this is Scott Stapp. Some of you may know me from the rock band Creed. We are going through the things that are better from the year 2000 than today. Number three, MTV played music videos. We're long, we're and number two, you could buy CDs. You could actually own a music collection. Kids, everyone, sound the alarm. Step away from your computers. Can you fathom that? Really? And number one, Arms Wide Open was number one on the charts. That's right. That tops the list, baby, right there. Thank you for your time. Sayonara. I got the gig, right? Didn't he do such a good job? <laughs> We're going to have to have a meeting about that. Well, it's going to have to happen after next week now, presented by StubHub. We have been talking nonstop about Fifth Harmony's new album, 727. We absolutely love it. And we're going to see how that charts next week. But what we do know is that they are bringing girl group power back in a big, big way. Work From Home is the first top five by a pop girl group in the last 10 years on the Hot 100. Yeah, the last time that happened was with the Pussycat Dolls with Buttons back in 2006. Yeah. Work, work, work. Okay, we actually have to work. We do have to work. But we actually spoke to the girls recently and they told us all about how much they've evolved since their first album. Check this out. There was like such a range of songs on there. There was straight pop, there was like more urban kind of beats. Give it to me, I'm worth it. You know, when Worth It hit and when Boss hit, we kind of felt like that kind of urban undertone sound kind of represented us really well. And it completely dictated, I feel like, the direction of our group. We started dancing a lot more, we started incorporating more choreography. And once we found that we wanted to really tap into that on 727. We've kind of honed into that sound and a, a lot of it it's like more cohesive this time around. I for one am excited for the tour. Luckily we talked to the girls about what to expect when it starts on you guessed it 727. We just want to show all our fans how appreciative we are of them for being with us from the get and this is our dedication to them since July 27th. Enjoy the music, release yourself and just like have fun. Yeah it's honestly gonna be a lot of fun and dancing and just like girl vibes so yeah. Nobody knows hashtag girl vibes like the harmonizers and they are the stars of this week's fan army roll call that's right the harmonizers are killing it they got their girls up from number 15 to number six on the social 50 chart that's their first time in the top 10 since september and get this last week they got almost 900,000 reactions on instagram and almost 400,000 mentions on twitter yes well we reached out to the harmonizers to get their reactions on 727 kill it Normani, kill it there was a lot of singing there was a lot of dancing, and there was a lot of screaming. What? Overall, I think they liked it. <laughs> you okay? Uh, I was just doing my video. You, you know what? You're doing yeah. a really good job. Keep going. Just like girl vibes, so yeah. We saved the best for last with this week's latest installment of the Chart Center Performance Series. Now, last week, The Voice crowned Allison Porter as its season 10 winner. Yeah, I love that girl. And we're actually going to wrap up this week by sending you to our correspondent, Adele Platon. She's over at the Chord Club with an interview and performance. I'm Tetris. I'm Christina. Take it away, Adele. Hi, everyone. This is Adele Platon for Chart Center. And we are here today at the Chord Club with the season 10 winner of NBC's The Voice, Miss Allison Porter. Welcome to Chart Center, Allison. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? Good. Tired. It's been a whirlwind, but so happy to be here. You've had two albums beforehand. Mm -hmm. You've been in this business uh, since you were a little kid. So what made you decide that I want to compete on The Voice? You know, I just had never really taken it to the next level and I had always wanted to and it just didn't work out and I had been in bands and tried every which way to kind of really find my place in the music business and the voice kind of fell out of the sky. I got an email asking if I wanted to audition and I was like, heck yeah, sure, why not? And now the rest is history. <laughs> exactly. You know, you've also had some time in the business and you were able to become really good friends with Adam Lambert. Uh -huh. Can we please get a collaboration with the two of you? Oh my gosh, please, yes. I think that is highly possible, I hope so.
What do you hope to put into your uh, forthcoming album? You know, before I was able to try different things and see kind of where I wanted to land in the music industry, just on my own. But now I kind of have like the roller coaster ride of the show, all the things I've learned, and I think it will really help me settle into the perfect lane, find out what the Allison album will sound like. I think the writing process will be very telling. And that's a perfect note to end on. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Allison Porter performing Down That Road. If you want to give up, take a chance. When the party's over, you should have the last dance. If there's no direction and you can't see, let your heart draw a map in the stars and go where it leads. Cause I can give you hope. Show you how only you can tell.